This is a lecture on Jackie Kay's poem, Still, um, the poem. And of course, be sure to listen to Jackie Kay reading her poem. Uh, and I want to look at grammatical analysis and of course, a content consideration. So uh, I've also given you a link to see the poem is published online so you can actually view it. And this of course is an image of Jackie Kay. So um, I thought it might be helpful, helpful if we look at a grammatical analysis. Um, Christian Book is clear when he says uh, concrete nouns and active verbs, but I've noticed in um, your assignments there's an abundance of um, passive verbs and a lot of abstractions, uh, which lead to very vague general um, poems that are difficult to sometimes get into for the reader. So she's opening with uh, a coordinating conjunction, the word so, and alongside a noun, still. And um, so the nouns I've, I'm putting in a dark purple, verbs I'm putting in this kind of dark blue co color so that we can see them right away. Um, modifiers I'm placing in a light blue. A grammatical understanding is important in uh, any writing. In um, creative writing, I think it's really important to understand grammar because it assists the reader. And also, so like if I'm saying to you, um, I want to see, you know, a concrete noun and you're a little hazy on what nouns are, then that can be really difficult for you to then uh, go into the poem and make sure that it has concrete nouns. So here right away we're seeing there are um, a lot of nouns, uh, you know, care home window, um, line, Glasgow, worry, world, chill. And we only have two verbs. And you'll notice right away they are active and present tense, says and sees. We have the one um, modifier, eerie, and it is um, modifying the word worry. And so what this means is that uh, the word eerie is an, an adjective. I'm looking right here. So um, she has only one modifier and a modifier is just a kind of a fancy gr grammatical word for description. Eerie is describing worry. In her, her second stanza, you can see the ongoing reliance on those concrete nouns. Squares, streets, bars, theaters, hospitals, ventilators, kids, lockdown, exams. One verb. And again, her verb is active and it is in um, present tense. So, and we're seeing um, a lot of modifiers. So we're seeing a lot of adjectives and uh, no adverbs. Um, so if you, if you favor uh, descriptive words and you want to describe something, it's often better to describe your noun. So when we see this right here, she has no need to describe the word me, but she is describing squares, streets, theaters, bars, hospitals, ventilators, kids, lockdown, or not lockdown, and not exams. But so we're seeing like the kids are school kids, hospitals are packed, um, half shut bars, deserted squares, empty streets. Um, she has very few um, kind of abstractions. So when she describes sad theaters, um, sad is definitely an abstraction because it is a, an emotion. Gold dust ventilators um, is, I think, a really um, kind of beautiful way of describing ventilators. And um, here we look at, um, she follows that heavy noun stanza with um, a, a lot more verbs and these verbs are um, participles and auxiliary and um, past tense and so other than I think take her verbs are um, a little uh, a little different in this one
take as our only clearly active um, verb. The others are uh, doing different kind of work. And you'll see there are not a lot of nouns, but again, we're, we're seeing nouns that are very concrete. Uh, world, day, mercies, crows, wall. Mercies is probably the only one for our noun that, that we could think of as, um, as abstract. And then of course she has um, far less, far fewer uh, modifiers here, but she does have them. So here in the final stanza, um, it is loaded with verbs and it has shifted to the past tense. She has very few nouns and very few modifiers. So um, there's like this buildup of uh, nouns, 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 and then a buildup of verbs and a lessening of nouns, which um, has really, I think, an interesting impact on this poem, just the um, grammatical structure of it. So <clears throat> always remember that advice by Christian Book, and there's a reason why we start with his 10 rules. Um, he is really adamant about concrete nouns, active verbs, an avoidance of modifiers unless absolutely necessary. And, um, you know, he, he likes symbols. He likes the use of comparisons. He does not like the use of the word like. He prefers a juxtaposition. So um, really kind of really work toward incorporating those rules of Christian book as much as you can into your writing. Uh, it will just really help you. You really need this te these technical skills for writing. So Jackie Kay is using modifiers and she's used them to add cron concrete, very tactile sensations and for rhythm. And um, please remember that poetry is about creating a response in a reader. Uh, and I'm, I'm gonna say this because I think it's really important. If you have a poem that you absolutely love, that is incredibly precious to you, I, I don't think the place for that poem is a creative writing class where someone like me is going to grade it and is then going to tell you all of um, its weak points or gesture towards them. So um, you want to hand in poetry that you want to make better, that you want to work on. Um, if you have a poem that you think is perfect, you probably don't want to hand it into a workshop or a professor because um, it's, it's going to hurt you. It's going to um, cause you undue stress. So uh, remember, like a poetry class is about teaching and it's about making you a writer or a better writer. Also, I really want to point out, like, consider how simple description, simply stated, can often evoke far more emotion than complicated, ornate, and elaborate descriptions. Those can often kind of pull your reader away from the sensations or the emotion or the response that you are hoping they may have. So um, just um, in general about the poem, just notice that the speaker and her mother are in lockdown to, due to COVID-19, the pandemic. The speaker's mother is in a care home and which most of us know carries its own very um, distinct and added on worry. In the second stanza, she reveals the emptiness of the squares and streets, the bars, the theaters, the schoolyards, the school kids who aren't having exams. And then she um, uses this kind of, uh, she slips in packed hospitals. So this packed hospitals is a real juxtaposition to the rest of this kind of emptiness. The speaker's mother is speaking in platitudes and she's using um, uh, you know, common British mythology um, when she talks about three crows because they are um, in British mythology and much of European mythology, they are harbingers of death. 
Um, and, but, you know, she speaks in like cliches and, um, but what she's saying still has weight. We get a real clear, clear concept of this is how this woman speaks. In the last stanza, um, she continues with that, the cliche silver linings. Um, and, but what's interesting is this is her way, I think, of comforting uh, the speaker or the child. And the child is, um, you know, that shouting to be heard, that, that shouting out, I love you, I love you. And uh, the mother's response and that beautiful ending, precious, she said, then the line went dead. That gorgeous um, internal and, and end rhyme, that, that said and dead, that's just stunning. So uh, notice that Jackie Kay doesn't use any kind of flowery phrases. We don't even know what her mother looks like. But what we do know and what has inspired in the reader is that shared experience of the pandemic and how it is something all of us are part of. And uh, also that imposed distance, we all felt, but um, she's giving us a really specific example of that imposed different distance for the mother and the child as they're both in lockdown and unable to physically visit one another. And that tangible discomfort of not being able to see, touch, and hold one another, you know, with the fear, you know, the mother is in an unsafe position due to her age, health, and her physical location in a care home. So uh, this is a photograph of Jackie Kay and her mother um, after the lockdown, and uh, you can tell they're both um, pretty gleeful and relieved. So uh, that is the lecture on Jackie Kay's still. I hope it really helps in your own writing, and I hope as well you really appreciate the stunning simplicity of this poem. Thanks very much.